Hello everybody, RMJ Movie Reviews back again. All right, everybody, so now I am coming with, uh, this is probably going to be the second to the last Christmas movie review of Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Um, the sequel to 1988's Die Hard, uh, I wasn't even really going to do Die Hard 2, but I kind of just figured this is a Christmas themed movie too, just like the first one. Uh, and again, like uh, the previous release I showed you, this is the original 2003 double disc DVD release that's in THX sound with the silver lining. 20th Century Fox has a few of these uh, kind of still floating around. Again, um, I recommend to younger viewers who didn't grow up on these movies, get this version if you can find it of the first three films. And it's only in the first three films that they have these, of course, not in those uh, bastardization two other movies that came out. Um, let me just start. Uh, Die Hard 2 was a film that I had originally seen. I had originally seen this when it first came on cable back in 19, I think it was 91, I think. I think I saw it on HBO. And um, and for, for younger viewers, again, for people who are not, you know, in their 30s, you know, for younger kids who early 20s, late teens, whatever, you have to remember that at this time, this was only Bruce Willis's like second action film. If I if I even recall, Die Hard Two was before the Last Boy Scout. I if I remember right, I think I think this had come out before Hudson Hawk. I think I think Hudson Hawk and Last Boy Scout were after Die Hard Two. But at this time, this was only Bruce Willis's second action. You know, now you guys know him as. Expendables and Red and all these. He's the action guy. But at the time, Bruce Willis had only done the first Die Hard, a couple dramas, and he, he was on the television show Moonlighting back then. That's that's what Bruce Willis was known for. And I think he, he had wrapped Moonlighting the year before this film came out. You know, uh, Die Hard 2 really goes back to... This is, this is really true to that era of Joe Silver hardcore, raw, gritty, one-liner, politically incorrect, brutal action filmmaking. Um, when I saw this film uh, on cable, when I was, I think I was nine, I was nine, something like that, I originally did not like Die Hard 2. And I know among the fan base, Die Hard 2 is kind of split. You know, people, some people really think it's just the most fantastic in the world. Some people even think it's better than With a Vengeance, the third one, which I highly disagree. And then there's some people that really hate Die Hard 2. So really, you don't find it in the middle with this one. You find there's really people that love With a Ven uh, I'm sorry, love Die Hard 2, and there's really people that hate it. Um, and like I said, when I first saw it on video, you have to remember, Bruce Willis wasn't an action star yet at that time. You know, really, it was still Arnold... Uh, Van Damme was coming in, Seagal was coming in, Stallone. Uh, this was even before Wesley Snipes had come into the scene. So, you know, I, I, I originally did not like Die Hard 2 when I had seen it as a young kid because I would just remember Bruce Willis as the guy that that TV show that my mom used to watch, you know, for Moonlighting. Um, Die Hard 2 has grown on me over the years. Um... I really like the film now. I like the fact that it, it, it stays very true to that. It, it, stay, I, it stays true to the first film in terms of brutal grittiness. The violence is, matter of fact, up to a whole nother. Everything in this, in this uh, sequel is more. You know, you get a higher body count. You get more gruesome death. You get uh, uh, higher action set pieces. Uh, only thing that you really don't get in this one is uh, a better story and better intelligence. And unfortunately, that's where Die Hard 2 really, really, really suffers. Um, there's a lot of mimicking of the first film in this one. And, and, and there's the, uh, something that really is annoying in this film is how not only do they try to mimic kind of scenes from the first film, Bruce Willis crawling through air ducts. Bruce Willis climbing on top of elevators. I mean, they, he blatantly acknowledges it to the audience. He goes, he goes, oh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm in a basement again, another elevator. How can they? How can it happen to the same guy twice? You know, and then 
you know, the, those scenes really annoy me. And then you even got the same scene where Bruce Willis's wife, Holly, and the evil reporter guy, you kind of continue their storyline from the from the last part of the first movie. They're trapped on the plane together. That's the whole terrorist. The terrorist plot this time is that, that some uh, South American drug lord dictator dude is going to be prosecuted in the United States and go to jail for drug dealing, basically. And he's, he's, he was doing some stuff in South America, basically killing people and selling drugs was what he was doing. Some people here in, in Congress, some army guys were in on it, so they think it's wrong that he's going to go to jail, so they're going to threaten to crash some planes if they basically can't, uh, you know, take the dictator and, and fly off to some country. I, I, I don't know. They're going to crash planes if the ex-army guys don't get the drug dealer dude. So the story in this is really... Um, I mean, I'll be honest. It's not good. It's not good. I, I will say, Die Hard 2 is not a good film. It's a very good brainless popcorn movie. But it's it, it, it's in, it, it, in no way... Uh, in terms of brainless entertainment, you know, it's good. But it, it it's a decent sequel. But in terms of being a good film like the first one, it, it, it's not at all. Um... There's a lot of things in this film that are really uneven. I mean, you can really tell. Number one, this came out very close behind the first film. The first film was 88. This was 90. So they really focused on, like I said, mimicking a lot of stuff from the first film. You know, Bruce Willis talking to Reginald Vale Johnson, the Twinkie jokes, them acknowledging that they're, that terrorists are attacking again. And, and I, I really don't like that they mimic the first film so close. But again, they probably pushed this sequel out so hard that that was the only choice they had, you know, was mimic a lot of scenes because they thought that's what the audience liked and up the gruesome violence, which I don't, I don't mind that they up the gruesome violence. That was fine to me because bad guys in this movie get dispatched in every way possible. Icicle to the eye, shredded in a in an in a airplane. I don't know if it's a propeller or whatever it is. I mean, strangulation, bullet shots to the head. <laughs> I mean, and, and also, there's things in this movie you cannot get away with today. I mean, there's a scene where the bad guys crash a plane full of... And they show an old lady on the plane talking about how... I really have a bad feeling. And the stewardess goes, everything is going to be okay. And the bad guy blow kills everybody. He kills the old woman, mothers. There's a baby down. They kill children. You cannot get away with that now. And that's what I love about this era of action filmmaking. Die Hard 2 has got a lot of balls on it, man. There's, you just cannot get away with that stuff now. You know, um... But, uh, like I said, it, it, things are, it's really uneven stuff in this film. Um... In particular, uh, the supporting players outside of Bruce Willis, Bonnie Bedelia, William Atherton, and uh, William Sather. The supporting performances, especially from the the henchmen dudes of William Sadler and the army guys of John Amos, their performances are really, really hammy and goofy. Art Evans, who's a fantastic black actor, he's been doing fantastic stuff for years. He's really hammy in the movie. I, I can, it, it just seems like... The, the Bruce Willis, Bonnie Bedelia, William Atherton, and William Sadler are in a different movie than everybody else. Dennis Franz, who's fantastic, he's really overly kind of uh, confrontational, just to a goofy level. There's really goofy performances, in it, and I think that's how I can really tell that they they focus definitely on the pyrotechnics, the action and stuff, but uh, the, the the story and the performances just. It isn't there, and there's a lot of things, like in the first film, they told the story with the camera, John McTiernan really visually told the story. This one, it's like there's a lot of explaining to the audience, like something will happen, the terrorists will kill all these SWAT team army guys, and then Bruce Willis will go, well, they did that because they make you waste your time, time we don't have. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff like that where it just feels just explaining to the audience for it to make sense not necessarily that it really is telling a coherent story it's just like this happened and we have to explain it to the audience because we know the audience won't really get it you know but um aside from the weak story and the really hammy performances from the supporting players i think what evens out die hard too 
is just the pure badassness of the action. I mean, this movie... This movie is ballsy, man. It, like I said, it takes a lot of risks. It's viciously violent. I mean, it's it's you cannot get away with an action picture like this now. Um, it, it it's gruesome, man, and it's as it should be. You know, these are adult action pictures. You know, I, I kind of wish they'd have the balls to make an action picture like this now, which they can't. So really, what what makes up for the really bad stuff in Die Hard Two is Michael Kamen's score, which he comes back. He did all the three. Um, and Bruce Willis and Bonnie Bedelia, William Sadler, William Atherton, they, they keep, they keep the movie grounded. And also Bruce Willis, this is when Bruce Willis actually was trying with his acting. He really had some badass lines in this one. He had a lot of corny ones too, you know, which were kind of staples of the, of that time. But, um, he kind of has more badass ones than he has good ones. I mean, in particular, I love him, uh, Stabbing the guy in, in the eye with the icicle, the the riding on the jet skis and shooting. Time's gonna run out of my camera soon, but um, oh God, I, there's more I want to say about Die Hard too. And of course, you know the Yippie Kaye MF, and then he lights the gas line on fire, and the whole entire plane explodes. That is truly, truly badass. So um, my camera's about to run out, y'all, because I don't know what's going on with it. But uh, Die Hard 2 is a um, highly flawed, uh, highly, highly, highly illogical sequel and not a good film like the first film. But it's a good, brainless, brutal, sadistic, gritty, uh, profane, entertaining sequel. And, and that's all you can ask for from that era of Joel Silver kind of movie making. So in that case, I highly recommend Die Hard 2. Um... That's really all I have to say about Die Hard 2 because the camera's going to run out. But uh, anybody else, subscribe to my channel, share the video. Let's put some comments about Die Hard 2, you guys' opinion on it, some things I might have missed. But uh, yeah, that's my RMJ movie review of Die Hard 2. And I'm not sure what my next movie review is going to be. It's just going to be a surprise, guys. So, RMJ movie reviews! Tune in again, subscribe to my channel, and share and leave the comments. I'll see you soon.